to a giant here in the country. I mean, I've heard you consistently mention Dangote cements. Perhaps if we count them on our fingers, they probably won't be up to 10. How can we have more of those industrial heavyweights in the economy where they can also create jobs? I mean, it's not, it can't be just these companies who have the capacity to create jobs. Perhaps we can have more of them support others to be on the same table in the same league as they are and then have more jobs coming in. But analysis is absolutely right. And I'll tell you why. That was what I said on that. The which we embrace and employ for decades was a policy that encouraged the That is why for the first time we put together an industrial revolution plan. And the whole idea is to make sure that uh, if I tell you briefly about the plan, today it's about where we have competitive and comparative advantage. Areas where we can be number one in Africa. So we now have that plan in place, which we are implementing. It also, just draw this here. Everywhere in the world, the companies that actually represent more than 70 or in some countries 90 percent, just this we are talking about, are not companies. They are SME. Also, a critical uh, as a country, we must of course forget. That is why my ministry is called on a new form smidam to deliver what this country requires in terms of SME development in this country. Okay, Honourable Minister, let's, I know you have gone on a couple of road shows in the last couple of months uh, before we came into the new year. Uh, how, for these road shows, I know that some countries have also visited, notably the US, Canada. Are there any major agreements worthy of note that we can keep our eyes on? Well, there were many, many, uh, uh, there have been many agreements, and I must say that uh, we have been privileged to make both things. One of all the trips Mr. President has, uh, and that's what other uh, global leaders are doing. So in every of our events, or all our trips, we tend to have a business forum. So the last one was in South Africa, where we had one of the strongest and the biggest South Africa business forum side by side with the bilateral discussions going on and a number of decisions were made and agreed on. So if you an example country for example, we met with Nissan, we met with Toyota. Both of them are keen on investing in a particular met with the president. They once they put it in place they've assured us that Nissan invest in auto in the auto in Nigeria. We have similar, similar interests for a number of the bigger players globally. In addition to that, we've, we've some South African investors who are investing in Nigeria to look at their investment program over the next three to four years. And I'm delighted to say that they are increasing their level of investment. One of the MOUs that was signed was with another South African company that's coming into in the oil and gas sector. Uh, that would be based in Calabar. In Canada, for the first time, which is an investment protection agreement, which has been the barrier for Canadian investors to come to Nigeria. That was it's a unique agreement. It's the first time ever that Nigeria has signed such an agreement. But my colleague, uh, Ed, uh, Minister Ed Fass, and I uh, actually signed when we were in Canada. As a result of that, we've seen renewed interest from Canadian investors that are already come to the country. The same thing with Brazil. I'll be hosting about 50 uh, uh, Brazilian businessmen that come to that investment opportunity. We seem to have lost the signal there again. Now we're still having the technical are HHS in a very, from, very unique uh, position. Abuja we're not there forever. We the need weather to outside. Take it well, I understand he's back again. Honourable Minister, could you just continue? Okay, glad to have you back. Just continue with what you were saying. Sorry? Okay, let me ask you another question. I mean, it's often said that if local investors do not invest, you know, in their own country, it might be hard for foreign investors to come in themselves. Now, in terms of what you've been doing to protect the local industries, I mean, we have many of these foreign uh, companies coming in. They get uh, loans, uh, and they have credits cheap or cheaper at their countries where they're coming from. We've seen interest rates in the U.S., Europe as, as low as zero, 0.25%. But here, 
of course, we know what the NPR is, and of course, that makes it even more difficult for these local manufacturers to compete. And of course, that WTO agreement that we have, where you know we have to there's a free trade agreement, we have goods coming in into the country. So, in specific terms, how have you or your ministry been protecting local manufacturers to ensure that yes, Nigerians do patronise the made in Nigeria goods, uh, even though we have the presence of other foreign goods in the country? Well, Esther, you are hitting all the right notes. You are asking all the right Look at investors far much more. And we realize that right percent down to the, 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 to the ministers and all that, realize we have to create that environment and make that happen. So what we're doing is, and what the president has directed, first of all, to restructure BOI and initially for now. That's a time solution. The longer term solution is that we are floating a wholesale vehicle which would be very similar, not exactly the same, but very similar to what you have in Brazil. Uh, that that will attract cheaper funds and will be able to uh, deploy that, 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 that one to the, to the uh, real sector of the economy. So we are fully aware of that. We are working, in fact, we have a meeting today on that wholesale vehicle. It's the same thing uh, in the UK has done recently. They've had the same challenge uh, to some extent. But we are aware of that BOI will be the vehicle for now. It has been recapitalized to some extent. The president has recently approved an additional, additional sum to the Bank of Industry and with the, to the Bank of uh, Industry, sorry, Bank of Industry and Agri Bank. But the longer term solution is to have a wholesale vehicle that actually will be deploying capital to the that also. Well, thank you, Honourable Minister. We're going to have to leave it there now uh, due to this weak signals that we're getting. But thank you so much for talking to us today about the federal government's foreign director investment drive, especially since uh, we began the new year. Thank you for talking to us. I've been talking to the Honourable Minister of Trade and Investment, Olusegun Aganga, talking about FDI inflow into the country. We'll take a break now.